Um, lots of uh, songs this campaign season. Yeah. Uh, some original work, some parodies. Y- you've heard them. I mean, but we have a couple of new offerings that I, I want to go over. But just uh, a, a few examples of some of the uh, highs and lows on both sides. You know, we try to be uh, even. Well, even handed. Yes, of course. And, you know, you make your own decision about which sorts of uh, music genres and uh, lyrical offerings you're particular to. For example, um, let's start with Kamala just hmm. to be to be sporting. Remember that one? That old classic? We're not, not going, going back? Going, we're not going back Just like, like a tree That's planted near the water We're not going back Very folksy, you know? Voting for our you, freedom you get it. Is this you where it. you get baptized in Kamala's waters? It, it had a little bit of a revival yeah, feel definitely. to it. Um, you had, uh, well, how who could forget? In Springfield, they're eating the dogs. I love this song. They're eating the cats. They're eating the pets of the people that live there. Mm. They're eating the dogs. Everybody. They're eating the cats. Uh. Uh. They're uh. eating the pets of the people that live there. People of Springfield, please don't eat my cats. Why would you do that? Something else. People of Springfield, please don't eat my dog. It's a catalog of other things to eat. They're They're eating the dog, you know. Mm -hmm. That's Uh, so sad. So, what a great song. uh, You have parody songs like. uh, uh, Because that's not a parody. That's just. That's original work. Original work. So, you know, with some Trump sampling in there. Uh, you've got uh, the uh, Borders Are Parody, uh, riffing off of OMC So Bizarre. From the wackos on the left to the maggots on the right, they know I'm beating Kamala, this race won't even be tied. Her policies are nuts, so she's out her goddamn mind. She just repeats the same thing, regurgitating her lines. She thinks that immigration without paperwork is good. Clearly not too much power underneath Kamala's hood. Borders are, it's what you are. You've got uh, some Spanish language offerings, too, don't forget. Let's hear it. Kamala, Kamala. Oh, I have a great playlist. I mean, playlist? I have a playlist. It's, uh, Kamala, Kamala, it is. Kamala, it is. Kamala, Kamala, it is. Kamala, it is. Kamala, it is. Kamala, it is. I feel like I need a margarita. Kamala, Kamala, it is. Yeah, you know. Kamala, it is. All right. All right, that so I like it. That's that's uh, very spicy. I like it. Uh, there is a new offering from this uh, group. I guess this is some sort of reality TV group or something. They're called the the Marsh Family. They're across the pond in merry old England. Um, very Partridge Family. If you see the video, I mean it. It definitely will call to mind the Partridge Family. Uh, Give me hope, Kamala, is their submission. He sought division, tried to build a wall. Nice voice. He made a few of his people wealthy. Oh, he don't care about the rest at all. He's got convictions, he did the nasty. Mom. And undermined the Constitution. This will be top He's ten. an oppressor of civil liberties. <laughs> Megalomaniac <laughs> Republican. Yeah, so, so Do they play that in North Carolina? I yeah. you know, I don't yeah, I I don't know if I don't know if that honky family can pull, quite pull that song off. Cuz I feel like loading bananas on a boat when I'm singing that. There's a little bit of that uh, to it. I, although I, I mean I, I I was impressed by your um interest in uh eating the 
dogs. I mean, you were, you were starting to sing along. I, you don't normally get that from a John Cass. I, I do. I, I had the white man overbite, too. That's very Same nice. Uh, so the um, the final offering is um, a song in support of uh, one Donald Trump. The uh, songwriter and singer is a gentleman named John Kahn. The song is, If He Can Take a Bullet, I Can Write a Song. And here's a little bit of that, to be fair. I get back up. That's what I do. I didn't soldier on this far just to lose. So take your shot. Yeah, and John Kahn, singer, songwriter, scriptwriter, film director, and Breitbart's Minister of Culture. John Kahn joins us now. John, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, so I know which of those songs is your favorite. Um, how is uh, how is the song performing uh, since you released it? Well, the song um, has, has gone a little bit crazy. Um, I, I'm sort of overwhelmed by the response. We hit... Uh, the number one billboard digital sales charts this week. Wow. Uh, it's at the top of the iTunes charts today. Um, humbly, I can say President Trump put it on social media. It's actually called Fighter. Right. And uh, so I'm just overwhelmed by the reception. Uh, and um, uh, have you, like uh, Kifnis, the eating the dogs guy, have you been contacted by like uh, Munich or something to do uh a concert out there. I just it's funny how some of these songs in this in this political context take off, not just in terms of downloads, but in terms of, you know, people wanting to see the artists in person. Well, I haven't been contacted by Munich, but I wanted to thank you guys for putting that song embedded in my head again. Exactly. The, the, yeah. I mean that that one's pretty catchy, I gotta say. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> Uh, so the, the, the critical response has been, uh, has been good. I mean, if, is this your first foray into writing songs that have a particular political bent? It, it, pretty much so. Uh, years and years ago, I wrote a song called American Heart, which was kind of my foray into this. And I had met Andrew Breitbart uh, in, in Los Angeles, which, of course, is the belly of the beast. And uh, I met him at like a conservative speakeasy, which was uh, called Friends of Abe. And it was for entertainment people, whether it be actors, filmmakers, musicians, that were basically looking for fellowship in L.A. to talk about their beliefs and, you know, without the fear of losing work. And so when I met Andrew, I ended up doing some writing for Breitbart in the early days. And out of those articles came a song called American Heart, which I played at all the tea parties. But that, that that one and this one are the only two. And and so oh so you go back to the tea parties. Yeah, that's that's when I met Andrew. It was, it was right in two thousand eight, and I had written this song that was kind of getting a little bit popular. And Andrew said it was the very beginning, the origins of the tea party. And Andrew was speaking, and uh, he said, "Hey, do you want to go play a tea party?" I said, "What's a tea party?" He goes, "I don't know." <laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> And it, I mean, it was, it was it was like the first one in like Quincy, Illinois. And uh, at that time, I wasn't out of the conservative closet because I was, you know, I was working in L.A. at the time and mm-hmm. had sat in a bunch of rooms and listened to these people I was working with say how awful uh, guys like me were. Right. And uh, so when, when I went and played with Andrew, I was wearing a hat and sunglasses and using a fake name. And ultimately, uh came out of the conservative closet on the in the Wall Street Journal. How difficult it has it been in, to be a conservative in the performing industry? Well, you know, my, my life changed a little bit when Andrew passed. Well, it changed a lot, and, and I ended up wanting to carry on his miss, mission. So I, you know, I've got one foot in, and I go to Nashville and write songs frequently. And Nashville is different than L.A. because you can actually – have a conversation with people who disagree and it doesn't really hurt you. And LA is a little bit different. When I, when I did that wall street journal article at that time, I was writing with a Grammy award winning producer who 
I had spent years trying to work with and he had written or he had produced Kelly Clarkson and Josh Groban and all these huge artists. And when the article came out, I, I never wrote a song with him again. Well, so he, that's, he that's just cut you off, huh? He just got cut off. Yeah, it was interesting. He kind of looked <clears> at me. I remember I saw him one time after the article came out, and he was so be like I, I'll remember the, his face, his expression. He he looked at me, and he was so bewildered that I could be this kind of person. Right. <laughs> and he like his eyebrows scrunched up, and he he said, "But I don't understand it. You're smart and funny." And 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 I it, that really registered with me because it was the first time I realized how folks in LA view, you know, our side. There's no club for writers. You no. Either, you when you write, you write on at your kitchen table or in the car, uh, with the kids screaming in the back seat. You write alone. And that's how it yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. Except in Nashville, sometimes you collaborate, which is which is I a guess. good thing as well. Yeah. As, yeah. As, I mean, I know Nashville's different than LA, as you were describing, but has has it changed at all? With, um, I mean, it's it's not it's sort of the usual suspects to some extent. I don't know how much Kid Rock broadens the acceptability of being a conservative music artist, mm. but um, but I mean, is it changing at all, or is it actually uh, is it getting even more chippy because of? Uh, just how intense the dislike of Trump is. Yeah, I think people are pretty entrenched and dug in in their own camps. I think the more people that that hopefully come out and and speak what they believe, that will change. But it's hard to see it changing anytime soon, because you know the minute somebody comes out with with a decent product on on the right, they get vilified and they and they they try to put them in the in the quote ghetto, so to speak, a conservative ghetto. John Kahn, singer, songwriter, scriptwriter, film director, and Breitbart's Minister of Culture. As you heard, his song Fighter is topping the charts right now. Do check it out and download it. John, do you, do you perform live as well? Um, I used to perform. I had a band back in the day and played a lot in L.A. and opened for Creed. Uh, oh, really? At one, yeah, at one point. And uh, I have not played this song live yet. I'm supposed to play it next weekend at the American America First Music Festival in, in Jupiter, Florida. So I'm looking forward to that. Wonderful. John Kahn, the song is Fighter. John, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for the song, man. And he joins us on the Turnkey.pro Answer line. You're listening to Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560. The Answer. Are you turning 65 and thinking about Medicare? Or are you over 65 and haven't enrolled yet because you still have coverage at work? Either way, Medicare done correctly will be the best health insurance you will ever have. Imagine having an annual deductible of only $240. There are only two good things about aging, wisdom and Medicare. But to navigate the Medicare maze properly, you need a mentor. Best part, my guidance costs you nothing. Call me. I can help. If you're tired of calling a bureaucrat at an 800 number to help you navigate Medicare, then you need a local expert on your side, your own health insurance mentor. See Stephen Tucker from healthinsurancementors.com is someone I know and trust. He's a 30-year licensed broker 